I am back. I'm making a, another video about this Roloflex that I picked up in Portland. It's reignited my interest in film photography. And I think simply because um, this camera does not come with any built-in light meter, at least this specific model doesn't. When I first got the Roloflex in Portland, I, I picked up the FX3 that I'm filming on. I put it out the window and then uh, remember the manual settings that are shooting at and then just shot everything with the roller flex uh, when I went out into downtown Portland. Um, and that, that kind of worked, but uh, I think overall a lot of the images were overexposed. And then once I actually got back home, one of my friends who gave me a bunch of her old film camera equipment, there was this light meter in it. Um, this is a Seikonic master. Now I don't exactly remember what the numbers uh, exactly mean and how I'm supposed to set it. Once you point at your subject um, based off the settings, uh, based off whatever this points at is what it tells you what your aperture should be or what your shutter speed should be at. But carrying this around to shoot with wasn't the most convenient way to shoot. For the longest time I was using uh, a light meter app on the iPhone. This actually helped me expose a lot of my images properly. Um, because you can lock the, the ISO number and you just point your camera at whatever you're, you're shooting at and it gives you what the other value should be. This was really useful. Um, I relied on this a lot, but pulling out your phone or pulling out like this type of light meter, um, it wasn't really the, the most convenient way or the, the fastest way to get like an exposure reading. So then over on Amazon, I picked up this. It's called the TT Artisan Meter. So on it, you can select the ISO number, the aperture, you can set the aperture and you can set the shutter speed. And then there's a button on here, which you then push depending on what you're pointing at. And then it gives you a little metering telling you like, oh, is it is it properly exposed? Is it exposed under or over one stop? Or is it uh, over or under exposed by two or more stops? This one is actually pretty nice because it comes with a cold shoe mount. So you could just slide it on top. I don't know how clearly if you can see, but uh, that blue dot is where I currently am and I want to come all the way out over here. Hopefully the hike won't be that bad, but if it is, I'll just stop and um, not pursue because it seems like there's a few things along the way um, to the Kaina Point pillbox um, that I could just stop and check out and watch the sunset from there. Yeah, uh, that's the plan. It's currently 2.46 right now. Sunset is at 6.30, so it's about a 40 minute drive over to there. I hope there's parking. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Hit a bit of a roadblock, quite literally. I'm probably just gonna hang out here at this beach. So it's been a few weeks since my Hawaii trip where I got a lot of use out of this uh, TT Artisan light meter 
And I have to say I'm really pleasantly surprised um, at how well my photos uh, were exposed using this little light meter. The small size really made it really easy to slip in and out of my pocket even when I was shooting with my Roloflex. And I found it, it was much quicker in getting a reading than using a phone app or the Sikonic Master. I initially thought it was going to be an inconvenience to have to carry another item in my pocket, but I found that it was quicker and faster for me to shoot with a dedicated light meter uh, rather than using a phone app. With the phone app, you have to pull out your phone, unlock it, switch over to the app, get uh, all your values selected. And uh, while that doesn't seem like it's too much of, um, of a hassle, I just found that it was much faster to have something that had physical dials and was dedicated to do just one thing, especially when I went out to shoot film photos. I found that in my experience that having something with physical dials and button was a lot faster for me to get a light meter reading versus having to deal with some of the issues that a phone app might have. One issue that I had with the phone app that I was using was it not selecting the value that I wanted properly. For example, if I wanted to set the aperture at 5.6, it would sometimes get stuck at the value just one before, let's say it was four. And it would take me a couple tries for me to actually move the dial. I had to move the, the, the slider just a little bit past 5.6 for the app to finally land on 5.6. On this trip, I did experience some other issues with my film cameras that weren't related to the image exposure. My roll flex shutter got stuck a couple times at the beginning of a roll where it would take a double exposure and sometimes the, the arm would get locked up or stuck. I had to pop open the, the camera and then it would release it and then I could advance the film. I think I lost a couple images that way. I've also noticed that there was some consistent film distortion on my Canon photos. It would happen maybe every one to two photos that I took. Um, and it happened over three or four different roles. I couldn't quite pinpoint what the issue was other than it possibly being an issue with the camera itself, with the AE-1, because I didn't see any of the distortion on my, on my Roloflex photos. It was only on the 35 millimeter rolls. If you're having trouble with exposing your images with film photography, I would say definitely check out this light meter. There's also another version from Voigtlander that cost over $200, but this one cost about $70 when I purchased it and it, it functioned perfectly fine. My photos came out well exposed. You just need to understand the exposure triangle to some degree, specifically when it comes to shutter speed and aperture. Your film speed or your ISO is gonna be locked off dependent on what film that you buy and load into your camera. That's gonna be it for this video. If you stuck through all the way to the end, thank you for watching and thanks for listening to me ramble.